This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. At Christ, who once was slain, not first his three days. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from ill, my passing soul deliver. At Christ who once was slain, not burst his three day My flesh in hope shall rest and for a season slumber till Trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number. At Christ who once was slain, not first in three day
Good morning, everybody, or good day, depending when you're watching us uh, here. Happy Easter. Uh, I am Dave Lewis. I'm the pastor here at St. Trinity. Pastor Drew Bayless will be with me in just a moment as we gather uh, at our socially appropriate distance to celebrate the good news that Jesus, the one who is crucified, is alive and lives even today. Pray that you know the joy of his resurrection. And even though we're scattered and apart, we know that the Spirit of God binds us together as his people. So my Easter prayer for you today is that you can celebrate with Christ is risen. You can say it at home. He is risen indeed. And that that good news brings you joy and peace, even in, in the middle of our isolation. So we're going to have um, some prayers, some music, a little thing for the kids this morning, message from God's word. And we rejoice in the news that the Savior, Jesus, who was crucified, is alive. He's alive for us today. He's alive to guarantee us eternity with him. So I'm glad you're here. I'd invite you to take just a second, no matter where you're watching from and participating from this morning, fill out a little note down there in the comments section. I would love to hear one thing, one of your kind of ordinary Easter traditions that you love. What's just an Easter tradition that you love? Share that there in the comments section. You can see the others as they write that in. And also right there in that comment section, you'll see a link uh, from St. Trinity to a digital connection card. I'd love for you to click on that link and just fill in some simple information so we know where you're from. We send you a little email thanking you for joining us in worship today. Um, we're glad you're here. We continue to persevere through this and uh, we want to um, join in worship. We want to keep you connected in some other ways. Uh, let's pray. Ask the Lord to bless our time today. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in prayer. We ask that you would be with us in our time of worship, that you would send your Holy Spirit that the joy of Jesus' resurrection would be also to everyone who watches and hears the good news this morning, and that we would have joy in our celebration. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Again, I'm so glad you're with us. Let's join together as we sing our opening song this morning. This is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. Monday 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. He is risen. We begin this morning with our call to worship. We thought you were dead. We thought the cross was the end. We thought that when the stone rolled over the tomb, that was it. But this is it. The dead are living. The cross is empty. The stone is rolled. And one word describes it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. God is making all things new. We thought you had said your final word. We thought those with the power had won. We thought that when you cried out, that was it. But this is it. The word breathes. The powers are defeated. The final cry was only the beginning, and one word says it all. Alleluia! Jesus is risen. God is making all things new. We thought the story was finished. We thought the hope had ended. We thought that when the tomb was sealed, that was it. But this is it. The story has just begun. The hope is newly born. The tomb is empty. The one word says it all. Alleluia! Jesus is risen. God is making all things new. This is the news. Jesus is risen. This is the moment. Jesus is alive. We gather in his name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the gospel. Jesus is with us. We thought that when they crucified you, death had defeated life. And that was it. But this is it. Love is stronger than death, and one word says it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. God is making all things new. Today's theme verse comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. We speak together now the words of the Apostles' Creed with the church around the world and throughout history. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with a hymn of praise. Fix. 
Good morning. Happy Easter, boys and girls. Welcome. Here I am at St. Trinity. And look, the parking lot is all empty. We're going to go see some other places. So come on a walk with me. This is where the Easter egg hunt is. But there's no eggs and no kids to hunt them. It's all empty. I'm here on the front steps. This is where the greeters usually are and they're saying good morning to everybody and helping people up the steps. There's usually cars all parked along here and it's empty. And here I am in the church. It echoes, it's so empty. This is where you are all, and my friends are almost always sitting, but it's empty. And you know what? My heart's kind of empty too without all of you here. But it's not about the sadness in my heart. That's not what Easter is about, but it is about empty. Let's listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse five. The angel said, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And you know what? They went and looked, and the tomb, the place where they had laid Jesus when he died on Friday, it was empty. Jesus wasn't there. Now, I want to listen to one more verse, a few verses ahead in Matthew 28. Jesus said this a little bit later. He said, I am with you always to the very end of the age. See, our tomb is empty where Jesus was, but we are not empty. Jesus is here with us. He says, I am here with you. He's there with you in your home. He's here with us in our hearts. That is what Easter is about, an empty tomb and full hearts. And that's what we rejoice, and that's what we celebrate today on Easter. So let's join together in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming back and coming back to life and being our risen God and taking away all our sins. Thank you that the tomb is empty, and thank you that we are full because you are with us always. We praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great Easter, boys and girls, and I want to give you our special blessing. Baptized child of God, you are loved by the Father, you are led by the Spirit, and you, you belong to Jesus and no one else. Happy Easter. The reading from God's Word for this morning, this Easter Sunday, the first reading from 1 Corinthians 15. But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying that there is no resurrection from the dead? For if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles would be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection from the dead. And if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope for Christ is only for this life, we are to be pitied more than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ was raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection of the dead comes, has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading, the gospel reading, the good news for today, comes from Luke chapter 24. But very early on that morning, the women went to the tomb taking spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. 
The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise up again on the third day? Then they remembered what he had said. So they rushed back to the tomb, from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up, ran to the tomb to look. Stooping in, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened.
The grace, mercy, and peace of Jesus be to all of you. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. And my prayer today is that that good news gives you hope and encouragement and peace, even as you grieve. That's what you're doing, you know. You're grieving. I would suggest that we're all grieving. Grief is the natural result of loss. Heidi and I celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary this past Friday. I know, it's amazing. She's put up with me 10 years. And I had plans to maybe go away for the weekend. Obviously not this weekend, but one maybe next week and the weekend after. At the very least, to go out to a nice dinner, to send Skylar to a friend's house for the evening, and just to enjoy each other. None of that happened. Kind of sad about that. Heidi's mom was supposed to come and visit us this week in St. Louis. She does it at Easter sometimes. We really look forward to it. But last week I canceled the flights because we knew that wouldn't happen. That makes us sad. Skyler, who loves her teacher and her classmates at Word of Life, is missing them a lot. And we can't see him. She's grieving. I could go on and on. What are you grieving? Birthday parties, cancels, reunions put on hold. High school kids who are kind of missing those end of the year celebration things like proms and athletic championships and graduations. You know that sense you have when something's not right? The the anger, the sadness, the ache? That's grief. It's one of the reactions to loss. When we adhere to the guidelines of social distancing and quarantine, we're all of us experiencing loss of some kind. Some of it's big and obvious. Some of it's subtle, and we may not even know it. And while we know that all of those things, the loss of those things is important, we recognize and realize that they're not the They're not the biggest things. They're not the most intense kind of grief. That intense knock you down, knock you out kind of grief comes from the loss of someone we love. It happens when a relationship is broken, perhaps when a debilitating illness takes hold. It happens when life situations radically change. It happens when one we love dies. Many today, maybe even you, are grieving that kind of loss, even the loss by death of someone you love, someone important to you. That pain is real. That pain is long-lasting. And that pain hurts terribly. On the first Easter morning, the followers of Jesus were experiencing an incredibly intense grief. They had lost so much in just a few short hours. To them, it must have seemed like everything they had held on to was gone. The Jesus they had come to know and love, to follow, to worship, to be amazed by, to be challenged by, was dead. Brutally executed in front of their very eyes, in the most horrible of ways, body taken off the cross and hurriedly laid in a borrowed tomb. With Jesus died their hopes and their dreams. With Jesus died their faith and their joy. With Jesus died their future and eternity. Their sadness was real. Their sadness was intense. Their sadness hurt. The reality of death and loss came crashing right into the middle of their lives. And they were grieving. There are times when each and every one of us will experience a grief that intense. And while we do not desire it, we need to know some things about grief and grieving. Grief isn't wrong. Grief isn't useless. Grief isn't forever. And different people grieve in different ways. We see that already in the accounts of the first Easter. If you put all four of the gospel kind of accounts together, we kind of get a big overall picture. 
Some of the friends of Jesus were grieving by taking care of business. The women very early in the morning before the sun had even come up had gathered the spices to finish the burial ritual in an appropriate and proper way, and they made their way quickly to the tomb. Mary Magdalene was so overwhelmed by the emotion of grief, her heart so broken, that all she could do was sit in the garden and weep bitterly. The disciples were hiding out, locked behind doors of fear, afraid that they too might be part of the Roman soldier's plot and plan. A little bit later in the day, we read of two followers of Jesus who were starting to already get back to business, at least outwardly, as they walked home toward Emmaus. So it's okay to acknowledge that in the middle of this time, people you live with may deal with loss differently than you do. But today, I want to make it clear that for all of those who know and trust and follow Jesus, Everyone can grieve completely differently. That's kind of one of the ironies today. One of the things that most of us are really grieving today is the ability to be together, to celebrate Easter, to sing the great hymns of resurrection, to enjoy a breakfast together, maybe to hunt for eggs, to have family gatherings. Yes, I'm a little sad because I'm sitting here in church all by myself today. However, the irony is this. It is the reason that we don't have to grieve that way. Easter is precisely the reason that we can grieve differently. Because we know the meaning and the significance of Jesus' resurrection. And because of that, because of his resurrection, we don't have to grieve in the same way that those who don't know about Easter and what it means will grieve. That's the comfort and encourage of Paul's words, our theme verse for today. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know that what will happen to believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. And even more clearly to the Corinthians in that reading I just read a second ago, Paul makes it clear if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are to be pitied more than anyone in the world. But if in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, he is the first of a great harvest of those who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. You see, the point that Paul is making on this Easter Sunday is simply this. We grieve, but we grieve differently because Jesus rose from the dead and he is alive today. Our grief is different because the living Jesus is making everything new. So this is important. It's okay to grieve and to mourn for those things and those people that are dear to us that we lose. Whether that loss is because of social distancing or whether it be at the graveside in the cemetery. However, we don't grieve with the utter despair and pain and hopelessness of those who don't know Jesus. One of the most beautiful and amazing promises of Jesus was seen in prophecy fashion by John, his disciple, as God gave him a vision of the future glory of heaven. John sees Jesus sitting on the throne, and he hears him say this, Look, I'm making everything new. Write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. It is finished. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all of these blessings. I will be their God, and they will be my children. The resurrected and living Jesus is promising, Look, I'm making everything new. Look, I'm giving new life. Look, I'm satisfying the deep soul thirst 
that you have, which is caused by grief, with a spring of everlasting life that comes only from you. Already on the first Easter, those closest to Jesus began to experience that new life that his resurrection from the dead guarantees. The weeping Mary's tears turn to joy. The frightened disciples, Peter and John, sprang from behind locked doors to see and then to tell of the empty tomb. <clears throat> the discouraged disciples of Emmaus had their broken hearts renewed and their spirits refreshed by the presence and the power and even the food that the risen Savior Jesus for, had for them. The good news first proclaimed by the angels at the empty grave took root and it grew and it spread and it was and it still is today multiplied to countless millions throughout all of time in all places around the world. The fact of history that Jesus sent from God, very God, was born as a real human person to a woman named Mary in a village called Bethlehem when an emperor named Caesar ruled the Western world, that this Jesus grew up. He inaugurated the kingdom of God on earth. He loved and he lived with people. He performed miracles of God. He was a real person in real history. He really walked the dusty roads of Palestine. He was arrested and tried and tortured and executed by a Jewish religious mob with the permission of the Roman courts. And he died on a cross outside of Jerusalem and was laid in a tomb. Today, we celebrate this very real and historical Jesus and that he did not stay dead. By the power of God, his father, <coughs> he was raised to new life. The grave could not hold him. Hundreds saw him alive and testified to him. He rose from the dead and he lives and reigns even today. And because of that, <coughs> those who will trust him, who will believe in him, are being made new. We're being made new through the forgiveness of our sins. We're being made new by being restored in a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. We are made new by the gift of his Holy Spirit in baptism, which draws us together as one, even though we are separated by distance. And we are being made new as we look forward to the hope of being reunited with Jesus in heaven. Because of that, our only hope is an arisen Jesus. For once again, to paraphrase God's word, if our hope in Christ is only for this world, we are to be pitied more than all people. So we no longer grieve like those who have no hope. And so we rejoice this Easter even without some of the familiar things of Easter, price, price, precisely because the reason we celebrate is still real. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still making all things new. And today, gathered as the people of God, in front of TVs or computers or an iPhone, instead of in a church building, just a side note, isn't it, an amazing gift of technology that God gives us that we can gather even like this. Think of it, for centuries, Christians celebrated Easter's isolated in their homes or maybe in the catacombs of Rome or even today in small groups behind locked doors for fear of persecution. <coughs> but we celebrate Easter, perhaps with a tinge of grief, but with a whole lot of hope. Because death doesn't win, a virus doesn't win, isolation and separation don't win. Jesus wins. Jesus wins, and he is making all things new. His resurrection from the dead means that we have hope no matter our loss. His resurrection means we can grieve the things we've lost, but we can live knowing that they are not the most important things. We persevere in faith, believing and knowing and trusting that a living Jesus is making everything new. New bodies, new dwelling place, new purpose, and yes, even a new Easter celebration with him one day in heaven. 
And so my Easter prayer for you today is this, that you may have hope and peace and joy, even in the middle of your grieving, because Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Watch this with me. So this is a time in our worship when I'd usually invite you to fill out our connection card for this morning, put your prayer request on the back. I'm going to encourage you to do that again. And uh, again, the digital connection card, I, I think there's a link to it in the comments section this morning, wherever you're watching. And that just helps us stay up to date with you, maybe send you a little thank you email. It allows us to continue doing ministry. There is a lot of ministry still going on here at St. Trinity. We're trying to be safe about it. Uh, but we think we're essential to this neighborhood and this community. So that means uh, food pantry is still serving people on a, a kind of a very new system. It means we're doing some deliveries. People are picking up at the curb. They're calling in uh, to let us know some things they need. So that continues. We're feeding kids every afternoon from 5.30 to 7. They come and pick up sack lunches, which are prepared for us, and are um, then served to help them with school being out. Their food needs have changed. We um, continue our Zoom Art of Reading classes, believe it or not. Uh, it's a fun thing to see the 10 or 12 kids and their adult sponsors all on the computer screen, all checking in from their houses, doing art and continuing with their reading. And we are keeping connected to each other by phone calls and notes and cards. So that's my challenge for you today. I'll pick up the phone, call somebody you haven't talked to in a few weeks, check on them, see how they're doing, wish them a happy Easter and just be a blessing to them and each other and keep that community going. Also at this point, I'd invite you to give your offerings, our gifts to the Lord. That's how we go about the work he's doing in this place. I'd invite you to do that again today. There's a link to our online giving platform there below, or you can send your gifts to the church office. Um, we know that's as God's enabled you and as he's blessed you, uh, that's how he does the work in this place through your generosity and your gifts. And I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for your partnership in this and how you just keep on supporting the work God has for us in this place. So take a few months to do that. Uh, Pastor Drew's going to come back up. He's going to lead us in prayer this morning as we uh, take our joys, our sorrows, our needs all before the Lord. Would you please pray with me and the church around the world? Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks that, Lord, you indeed are risen and victorious over sin, death, and the devil. The grave no longer has a power over you, and those who by faith trust you, Lord, the grave no longer has power over us. Yet, Lord, we know that death and sickness and pain surrounds us in this world as we walk the face of this earth. And Lord, we know that that is 
true in the lives of many this day and this week. Lord, we pray for those who mourn, those who mourn the loss of loved ones, of parents, of friends, of children, of dear brothers and sisters, of aunts and uncles. Lord, we think of those who struggle with sickness and illness of all kinds, especially, Lord, those struggling with this sickness in the pandemic of COVID-19. Lord, we pray too for those who are struggling financially, those who have lost jobs or their jobs have been cut and limited, and they're not sure where their next meal comes from or where their next dollar will, will come from. Father, we pray for your provision in their lives, and Lord, help us as brothers and sisters of those people to come alongside and support them where we can and how we can. Father, we pray for those who uh, are, Lord, missing their, their regular routines, whether it's school or work or, or just simple play and, and time to enjoy the, the great things of life that you've given to us. Lord, we just pray, uh, Lord, for your peace in our lives. Lord, help us to see these uh, moments of uh, being a part uh, as being special and, and something that, God, you have gifted to us as well. Lord, we praise you and we thank you this Easter day, even though we are apart. Lord, we know that in your Holy Spirit, you have gathered us together in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, not just as the church on this globe today, but as the church throughout time and space. Lord, all of your saints, Lord, have come together to praise and glorify your son, Jesus, the victor. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
this morning, folks, here at St. Trinity. It's been a joy to have you. Uh, yep, can't wait to see you in person, but I'm glad that you decided to, to join us this way. And we thank God for the technology that allows us to do it. So receive the blessing of our risen Lord, the Lord Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, bless you. May he keep you with uh, his peace. May he fill you up with his spirit so you have great joy. May he uh, empower you <coughs> so that you shine as a light to the world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go with that joy, have that joy, and show that joy to others. Amen. So again, it's been great to have you today. Pray that you can stay connected. Please let us know if we can do something. Yep, we're doing a lot of that by internet, but you can call, just pick up a phone, leave a message with the church office, call me. We will help in any way we can. Pray you have a blessed Easter day. Look forward to seeing you again next Sunday right here. Have a great week in the Lord. Blood.